Today we have the much requested double rubber bouncy reball rounds. Now these are solid rubber balls and are an alternative to paint balls. They're 69 caliber I believe and they're so light I had to put two of them in each round just so it actually function. Jeff and OG out here with you shooting paintball rounds. Jeff, tell us a little bit about how you built these rounds. They're not actually paint balls. They're solid rubber paintball rounds called reballs sometimes. Sure, reball. Reusable rubber balls. They're, they act pretty much like super balls. When you drop them, they bounce very well. But they got paint in them? No, no, they're just solid rubber. Oh, okay. They're very light. I've got two of them per round, double two ball trouble. So you're saying there's two balls in this little... There's two shaft. balls. It's very masculine. All right. Let's give them a try. I don't know how well they'll work, but there's only one way to find out. Fire them through the old Weatherby 459. Yes. Here we go with the little boy. Hey, something hit it. Now for the most part, these had a very unpredictable flight pattern, a very wide spread, and we were lucky to be able to get one of them just to hit that big jug at less than 10 yards away. Goat target, baby! Here we go. Will it bounce? Two balls on the goat. <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. Yikes! I have no idea what these balls are actually made out of, but they're very resilient and pretty tough. The balls, when they hit the plate, just flattened out to about five times their normal diameter. Also watch the spark when the wadding hits the plate. Ceramic plate, what will it do to that? Right I don't on, know. Right on the green triangle. Okay, I'm ready. Yikes. Ooh. Didn't hit the, the only thing left is the <laughs> dot. One ball completely missed, the other one did pretty good damage. These things aren't very powerful, they don't have a lot of energy, even though they are moving rather fast. It is interesting how on this shot, the rubber stretched so much that it actually snapped like a rubber band and broke into pieces. Okay, now at a brick. Will it break the brick? Okay, I'm ready. Oh, fire another one. Anything? Nothing. It just went around it or something. Like Andrew looked Angelina Jolie shoot. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, that one hit. Barely moved the brick. So far looking at the damage these things are doing, these would probably be classified as less lethal even though they are traveling rather fast. We will be chronographing these things just to give you an idea how fast they're actually traveling though. Okay, this time we will chronograph it, see what kind of velocities we've got before we forget to do important things like that. <laughs> okay, I am ready when you are. While the rubber reballs did not have enough energy to actually go completely through this particle board, they did have enough energy to cause spalling. They actually knocked a big chunk of particle board off the back. Okay, I'm ready. Oh yeah, 18, 18. <laughs> That's fast. No fingering. <laughs> So this is where the uh, balls hit the first time. When the balls leave a dent in the wood, you know you got pretty good uh, power behind them right there. Yeah. That was an un unmolested area back here that chipped off the back of this masonite board. Yeah. However, this spot over here, both of them hit right next to each other, but it was already a weakened spot that had just a target. Yeah, we just to... patched that board up afterwards. So. So. But you it, could give, it gives you an idea what they do by the dents that where they missed actually. Right. Now these two balls were traveling extra fast. 
On average, I believe these were traveling around 1,400 feet per second, but this was just a much faster shot. Okay, now for the world famous clay block. Whenever you're ready. Yikes! Ooh, look at those two different holes. Yeah. While it appeared that the ball on the right went right through the clay, it actually didn't. It was just the energy wave caused by the ball that actually blew through the back. I want you to take out the top one and the bottom right one. All right, top one first. Okay. When you're ready. No, no, but at the same time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, sure. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I think that managed to damage all three all of them. All three, yeah. That's even better. <laughs> I want you to take out the top one and the bottom right one. All right, top one first. Okay. No, no, but at the same time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, sure. Now, this may appear to be the most spectacular trick shot you've ever seen, being able to predict where two unpredictable balls may actually land. But in reality, it was just absolute pure luck and coincidence that one ball actually hit the top can and one hit the bottom right can. When the bottom right can burst, it also caused a lot of damage to the bottom left can, causing all three cans to actually burst. Called that one, man. Top one and the bottom right one. And I shot exactly the ones you wanted. He did. Precision. That's, I mean, he follows commands pretty well, I think. Well, it's all about precision ball placement, Jeff. <laughs> so look at this I found on the ground. How's that stuck to it? One of the balls is wearing a little red cape <laughs> of aluminum, which is embedded in oh, there. Oh yeah, it is. Actually, it's quite a ways in there. <laughs> Either that or the ball is stuck on it. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's huh. funny. So yeah, hit these, uh, what are these cans made out of? Uh, Zinc? Uh, steel, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Aluminium. It's so, it's so important to people, it you know. It is very how, important. How, how it's spelled in the United States. And in